Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. Today's video is about transformers. So this is feeding on from the inductors we covered yesterday. A transformer is very much like an inductor because, well, it is an inductor in a way, but they're very different. An inductor is a two terminal device, potentially four terminal device if it's like a filter, like a common mode choke, which is what's used here, for example, and on this as well, these are common modes. So they've actually got two windings which are magnetically tied together to create a common mode rejection. Transformers are usually multi tap So this particular one here, this is transformer right there. This is quite a complex one because it's got lots of windings on it. So this one has got lots of connections. Two, four, six, seven. Two, four, five. So it's got five terminals this side, seven that side. And you can see that here they go into the transformer. So it's four pins aren't used, it's only using three terminals on this side. Three actual connections, the rest will just be there for mechanical resilience, so it'll help hold the thing down. There will be transformers which use multiple pins like this. This side here, probably a C through there if I get this right. There you go, it's got lots of pins there. And how many are actually being used? So this side of the transformer is using all five connections. This one here, which has got extra insulation, both sides. That would be primary side going in. We've also got some finer wires on some other pins. You can just see a little fine wire coming down on that one over there, for example. There's a really fine wire. Can you just see that there? So that's more windings, which would be like a feedback. Now this is in the realms of switch mode power supply, knowledge and design and, and covering that aspect. And I'm not going to cover switch modes right now, but basically a transformer uses magnetics and magnetic flux in order to transfer energy from one winding of an inductor to another winding of an inductor. In this case, it looks like it's got three windings possibly center tapped, which means it's got a continuous winding, got some say point here to point here, which is wound in between them. And then there's another tap somewhere in between those, which is taken off that. That's not necessarily in the, in the center. It could be to one side to create a voltage differential. It could be, you know, this would be zero volts. That could be minus 12, that could be plus 12, effectively AC. This is AC. Um, transformers only work on AC. Transformers do not work on DC. I should specify that. You have to put an AC in transformer. You can't put DC into a transformer. It will saturate the core and it will just overheat and basically melt because it is basically a short circuit. They're designed and only work with AC. So most transformers, if you ignore switch mode, the complexity of switch mode, a transformer is basically two windings, on the simplest form at least, isolated from each other, which have a ferrite or iron core to separate them and link them together magnetically. And when one coil is induced with an AC voltage and current, it causes the magnetic flux to induce a proportion of that into the secondary winding. Those proportions depend on the windings themselves, how thick the windings are, how many turns there are on each winding, and the ratios of each. So if you had, say, 100 turns on the primary side and 100 turns on the secondary side, that would be a one-to-one -one transformer. The output would be something very similar to the input. It would be slightly less because of losses and what have you, but it will be very similar. If you had 100 turns on the primary and 10 turns on the secondary, that would be a 10 to 1 reduction. So if you're therefore you're putting in, say, 20 volts AC on one side, you'll get 2 volts AC on the other, or thereabouts, you know, allowing for losses and what have you. So that's basically how they work. Like an AC primary transformer, like off the AC mains, that would be 240 volts or 110 or 120 volts AC, whatever it is from your country. That will step down to some other voltage to power the equipment, which is then converted down to DC. I'll be covering AC to DC conversion in a later video, so make sure you subscribe for that. In that process, it steps it down and also increases the current, depending on the windings. The thicker the winding, the more current it can transfer. But obviously then you get issues with the size of the transformers, you know, because the thicker the wire, the bigger the transformer has to be to get that many turns around it in order to provide enough power through a transformer. In most cases, you have a primary side, which would be AC mains, for example, in older equipment, which don't have switch mode power supplies, you'd have a linear voltage regulator system usually. And prior to that, you would have a transformer which converts the mains AC down to a low voltage of, say, well, it could be 20 volts AC or 15 volts AC or 50 volts AC or something like that. Um, depends on the circuit application and what's required. And that is then rectified and then converted to DC, which we'll cover in a later video. Now, with transformers, 
the lower the frequency the transformer operates at, the physically larger the transformer has to be. Like a mains AC transformer might be on at 50 or 60 hertz, depending on which country you're in, and so it needs to be larger. Switch mode power supplies, the transformer is very small. That's because they run a much higher frequency. The higher the frequency, the smaller the transformer needs to be. So switch mode supplies have very small transformers because they're running at a high frequency. It could be 1 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, even 100 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz isn't that common because you might hear it. 20 kilohertz and above is quite common in order to avoid you actually hearing the thing buzzing. If you go near a piece of equipment you can actually hear the thing whistling or you know, high-pitched sounds, you can probably hear the transformer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.